All right, now I feel like I have to talk about the first time I got my period, okay? Um, I mean, everyone else is doing it. And you know what? I'm really glad that we can do it here because we never get to talk about this crap, okay? No, I have to say one thing. These stories are so, are they not incredible? And that we feel so safe to be able to discuss them. But I just want to tell you, my story is fascinating. I was six feet tall at the age of 13. And I was, uh, I still hadn't gotten my period. And I thought, of course, I was a pregnant guy. And of course, now she's on Oprah, but I have no career. But anyway, the point is, I was six feet tall. I'm wearing white painter's pants. And I go to my piano lesson. And I get home from the piano lesson, and I notice, there it is. And I'm so excited, because I'm not a guy. And not that there's anything wrong with you people, but, you know, it really did not, you didn't need to wear a tuxedo. Anyway, the point is, I get home, there it is. I'm so excited, and I say to my mother, guess what, Mom, I got my period. And she says to me, not kidding, why don't you call your piano teacher and see if you stain her bench, OK? That's what she said to me. Like, I'm going to call her up and be like, hey, Mrs. Shallot, great lesson, yeah. I know, I love Mozart, too. Listen, um, just got my period. I know, me too. I thought, yeah, I know. <laughs> See? And just wondering if anything got on your bench or anything. Is that great? All right, see you next week. Right, scales, yep, A, yep. OK, arpeggio, bye-bye. So you know what, we have to listen about your prostates every goddamn night, your PSA count, your Viagra shit on the goddamn television. <laughs> Too bad, okay? <laughs> you having a good time, ladies and gentlemen? All right, please welcome stage actor Joe Pollack, free speech attorney extraordinaire Martin Garbus, filmmaker Liz Garbus, who happens to be Martin's talented daughter, well, that's why they have the same last name, and once again, the amazing Martha Plimpton. This is a reading from Then Again, Maybe I Won't. Hey, I'm Tony Miglione, and I'm in seventh grade. This morning in my math class, I wasn't thinking about Lisa, the girl next door who gets undressed at night with her lights on and the window shades pulled up. I was concentrating on a problem in my book. When I got the answer, I raised my hand. Tony, why don't you go up to the board and show the class how you worked it out? <laughs> Just as I finished writing the numbers on the board, I started again. A boner. <laughs> mind over matter, mind over matter, I told myself, but still it went up. I kept my back to the class and I prayed for it to go down. That's an interesting way to solve the problem, Tony. For a minute I thought she meant my problem. But then I realized she was talking about my math problem. Could you explain your reasoning to the class, Tony? I started talking, but I didn't turn around. I could just picture facing the class. Everybody would laugh and point to my pants. I wish I was wearing my raincoat. We'd hear better if you'd turn around. What could I do? Pretend to be sick and run out of my room? Maybe. Or just refuse to turn around? No. Ask to go to the bathroom? No. Tony? Yes? We're waiting for you to explain the problem. OK, Miss Tobin. I was holding my math book in my left hand and a piece of chalk in my right hand. I turned sideways, keeping my book in front of my pants. I explained my answer as fast as I could, and Miss Tobin didn't even ask me any questions. I walked back to my desk, still holding the math book close to me. But I didn't have to worry. By then, it was down. <laughs> From now on, I'm going to make sure I always have a stack of books with me. Books are a lot better than an old raincoat. I got an autographed copy of that book for my bar mitzvah. Yeah, then again, maybe. I won't. So I'm reading along and I realize there's four pages missing. And then a couple more pages. So I go to my mother and say, look at this. There's something wrong with this book. 
She checks it out. Sometimes that happens when a book is being printed, honey. Oh, come on. I didn't think he was ready to read about elections and red dreams. He's just 13. So we go down to the public library and they get a copy of the book. And those missing pages, pretty interesting. But I never tell my mother because now I know she can't deal with that stuff. She's never going to tell me anything. I forbid my kids to read any of the trash you write. You're a disgrace to mothers everywhere. My father says you must be a Democrat. <laughs> Whatever that means. He says you're in need of a spiritual program. Sick, 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 and shame, shame, shame. Thank you.